for my first speedrun, I've decided to go with a game very close to my heart. A game I've played on the edge of a cliff in the freezing cold. It's also a game that to this day I've never actually finished. Okay, so My Little Pony, A Maritime Bay Adventure is a game for Generation 5. It's overpriced and intended for a very young audience. However, it's also perfectly functional and controls pretty good, which is great for speedruns. The game is so short that you could probably finish it within Steam's two-hour refund window. However, if you want to complete the game even faster, say in under 10 minutes like the Any% Percent world record, you're going to need many hours of practice. Special thanks to Coaster for helping me learn most of this stuff, although like with most speedruns, it's truly a collaborative effort from a whole community of people discovering tricks and sharing ideas. The game starts with a cutscene. These can be skipped by holding down the B button, but there is some skill involved to predict the exact moment a cutscene starts. Welcome to Bright House Hills. Once the game actually begins, there's not much to do except make a beeline for the next scripted scene. Here we encounter our first enemy of the game. These little bunnies aren't just NPCs. They are your worst nightmare. You'll understand why soon. Okay, this fuzzy jerk stole our bag and we need to get it back. But first we skip a cutscene and soon learn about our first mechanic, flower jumping. Holding B lets you skip this tutorial, and tutorials are the only form of cutscene where you don't need to time the B button for, so you can just hold B as you approach one of these. Much of the challenge will be memorizing where each cutscene, prompt, and tutorial is. And that goes out to any Regular subscriber. Oh, I- Backing out, huh? Once we catch up to the bunny fugitive who stole our bag, we forget about the bag completely and continue the game without it. Except the game has an invisible wall here which prevents you from leaving without the bag. Well, we could spend precious time dealing with the vermin and get our bag back normally, or we can use our first skip. Activate this flower, and if you jump on it in just the right spot, you can fly right over that invisible wall. Oh, she's stuck. I think I broke it. I broke the game. You have to jump rather precisely on this part of the pedals, and you also need to carry enough momentum into the jump, so this skip can take some practice. Unfortunately, this jump is easy compared to some of the skips coming later. Once over the invisible wall, we have our first loading screen. It's worth noting that runs on PC use a tool to time the game, excluding loading time. So if you have a slower computer, you can still be competitive. This tool is part of Live Split, which is what tracks our speedrun. Splits for this game are specifically set to different loading screens. That way the tool can track our progress through the run automatically. Pretty cool, huh? You're gonna wanna be holding up on the control stick to give Sunny the best head start here. But good luck, because the camera position here is random when you spawn, and it's really likely to find yourself running into these rocks if you're not careful. Bumping into walls, even invisible ones, will slow you down. Skip a cutscene, then continue holding B to skip another completely pointless tutorial. They tell us to follow the butterfly if we get lost, but if you're doing the speedrun correctly, you should be zooming so far ahead of it that you'll never see her again. She wants me to follow her. I'm definitely not following that butterfly. Okay, buckle up. Next is a one in a million skip that's rare to even capture in a recording, let alone perform in a run. Jump up here and across... Oh, didn't make it. Alright, let's try again. Uh, and again. Seriously, if you pull this one off, you're amazing. I only managed to do this once during a practice session after about a hundred attempts. But if you hop across here, you can save about three seconds. Yes, three seconds. Is it worth wasting a second or two attempting this if it only saves three seconds when successful 1% of the time? <laughs> That's just the kind of gamble you have to consider when speedrunning. This is called log skip, because if you're extremely lucky, you can skip the part where you jump over these logs. It can take practice to just get through here quickly without bonking Sunny's head. Regardless of how you get there, it's time to talk to our first pony NPC. Hi Izzy, and yes, I am indeed still here. You're still here? Chap lips. They're chap lips. Chap right. Izzy's line about still being here and needing to hurry really speaks to you after about the first 50 or so attempts. Hurry. Anyway, skip through her cutscene and gather three items. This is a segment where there isn't a crazy advanced strategy, but there is still a lot of skill required for a good route with good timing. Okay, time to talk to Hitch. It seems like random chance whether or not he refuses to wave at you, so if you're superstitious, you can consider this an omen of a bad run. Hitch knows all. Skip his cutscene, and now it's time to face off against our worst enemy once again. The technique is simple in theory. Round this corner as tight as you can without colliding with the tree's hitbox, then collect the second bunny first. That way you can collect the first bunny as you return to Hitch. The problem with bunny herding is that they aren't always on a predetermined path, so if you push them in the wrong direction or get ever so slightly ahead of one, it can be a run killer. This isn't the only time we need to herd bunnies, but it's also not the primary reason they are evil, as you'll soon see. The third bunny is all the way over here, and it does more or less seem to be on a path, so you can cut this corner and push it towards its hole. Talk to Hitch, skip his cutscene, and then it's on to another fetch quest. Collect this carrot, then collect these two carrots. There's another difficult glitch which lets you grab both carrots at the same time. <laughs> Whoa, what? 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 
What was that? In theory, you press the B button twice in just the right position for both carrots to spawn at the same time. However, if you're like me and you do it wrong, you're more likely to summon the second biggest enemy of the game. The evil soft lock. A soft lock usually happens when you break the game too much and it stops working. There is no way to pick up this carrot once you've entered a soft lock. Since you can't pick up the carrot, not only is the speedrun killed, but you literally can't continue the game since Hitch won't let you leave unless you bring him three carrots. Hitch demands perfection! Once you have all three carrots, jump down to Hitch and skip his cutscene. Spam the A button quick enough and you can agree to his request without the request even appearing. Oh no, turns out that request was whether or not we wanted to do more bunny herding. This brings us to our first minigame. Now, you could play the minigame normally like a filthy casual, or you can skip the minigame completely with a very specific combination of actions and button presses. This looks like an advanced glitch, but it's actually one of the easier ones to pull off. For some reason, you can skip minigames if you press the B button during the tutorial at just the right time. You can't press it too slowly, and you can't press it too fast, but once you get the right rhythm, the game will stop for a moment as if it's confused. Take advantage of this confusion by pausing the game and exiting. This will skip both the minigame and the results screen, because your score would be zero anyway, and no one needs that kind of embarrassment. The minigame skip was discovered by someone named Ash, so the community calls this the Ash Skip. Skip two cutscenes in a row, and we find ourselves in town. Unfortunately, the way forward is blocked by a bunny gang. Yes, that's actually what they're called. That bunny gang. This town is terrorized by a gang of bunnies. They make the rules, and Big Chungus over here isn't going to let us by without a fight. So, how are you supposed to get by? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I've never completed this game normally. Guess I'm not going that way. All I know is the speedrun method. All you have to do is stop. Sit down. We need to have a talk. We've seen some interesting techniques. I bet you're just itching to try log skip, but this next skip is the reason bunnies are our worst enemy. Do not speedrun this game. Do not attempt bunny skip two. Do not jump on this barrel, carefully align yourself on the hitbox of this guard's helmet, leap around the stall's hitbox onto a tiny ledge which will only hold you while facing a certain direction, then jump in the opposite direction onto another ledge which is obscured by this character's hitbox which extends into outer space for some reason. Yes, folks. This is Bunny Skip 2.0. In case you were wondering, Bunny Skip 1.0 involves playing the game normally to get this flower, then jump on that flower to gain access up here. But playing the game normally takes time, and for a speedrun we don't have time. We only have suffering. I have spent hours just practicing this one skip, jumping on this poor guard's head over and over and over. And clipping the edge of paint shop's invisible, massive, and possibly tall hitbox over and over and over and over. At a certain point, I'm convinced there is no strategy here. It's, it's just a 10% random chance of making this jump. But let's say you're successful, and you manage to pull off this move on your first or maybe second attempt. Oh my god. This might be it. Well, jump carefully to the next part, because if you fall, the run is as good as dead. You thought you were good at the- oh. No! Oh, and you're not just jumping across these structures. No, to complete Bunny Skip, you need to jump on two invisible hitboxes in quick succession with a fair amount of precision. See this unactivated flower? Turns out it has a hitbox which extends above it. It extends at just the perfect height to give us an angle to hop around this corner. See this trash can? Turns out it also has a hitbox we can jump onto. First, insert your waifu because she is trash, then carefully jump onto the flower's hitbox, then onto the trash can hitbox. Then we can jump over the bunny gang and progress onto the next segment. Just don't fall here or else you'll encounter the game's two biggest enemies at the same time, the bunny softlock. Oh, that was close. Wait, what? What? I triggered the bunnies? I didn't even know you could trigger the bunnies from this side. Wait, so what happens now? No! No, Sonny! You, you... 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 I softlocked it! No! No! Next, we meet Zip, but we don't have time to chat with some nerd who owns a folding phone, so we skip her cutscene. It's time to do another glitch. Normally, you have to play a racing minigame to open up the rest of the map. This minigame doesn't have a tutorial like the others, and therefore we can't use Ash Skip. We could play the game normally and complete the minigame to get the rest of the map open, or we can leap from this ledge at just the right time to clip into an invisible wall and surf it all the way to this corner, which is just barely low enough for us to jump over. And we're into the locked part of the map, no problem. The trick here is to jump very late, then move right to clip this invisible wall and bring it over to the left to start surfing. Cowabunga, sonny! Once we reach this corner, hold down on the control stick and jump. While jumping, move to the left and we're over the invisible wall. Congrats! You just completed race skip! It's once again time to do something strange. Play the game normally. 
talk to Sprout, interrogate the witnesses, confront the small pink pony, and complete some fetch quests. Check out one of my runs on Twitch, linked in the description if you care to see every little detail. One fun trick is whenever Sunny is stuck in place after completing an objective, you have a moment to jump, which technically moves you forward in the run ever so slightly. Okay, so after you restore the billboard and talk to Izzy, she congratulates you on your run! You're getting pretty good at this! Thank you, Izzy. Next, talk to Hitch. You can trigger his cutscene ever so slightly faster by jumping up here. It's time to round up the remaining bunny fugitives for their lethal injections. You just play the game normally here for the most part, but once again you can grab the second bunny first, then return it and the first bunny at the same time. Activate this flower to discover the third bunny up top. There's a small time save you can pull off by jumping off the ledge just before the bunny locks you into a cutscene. Once the bunny gang has been arrested and justice is restored to Maritime Bay, head back up over this bridge and talk to Zip. Skip her cutscene as usual, but be sure to mash A to say yes to her prompt. It's time for another mini-game, but this is bypassed using Ash Skip from earlier. If you use the same pause menu exit glitch, you'll notice the cutscene is glitched and frozen. That's okay, we weren't gonna watch it anyway. Run down the street and trigger another cutscene, which we'll promptly skip. Gee, I wonder what the story of this game is. I guess I'll never know. It's time for another skip. Jump on this hat, carefully jump onto this flower's hitbox, then leap to the next stall. There's a much faster skip if you can jump on this stall, then jump around these ponies' hitboxes, but uh, yeah, good luck with that one. It doesn't look possible to get around the hitboxes. They stick out so far in the front. The normal way is to simply activate the flower we abused earlier and jump up, but that would be too easy. Oh, and get used to hearing this. Pegasi, go home. Pegasi, go home. She just renamed this split to Pegasi, go home. Skip the cutscene and immediately jump before Sunny is frozen for a satisfying time save. We're almost there. Head northeast and talk to Zip. Rudely cut her off, first as Sunny, then as a speedrunner in a hurry. This flower is actually one of two which you can technically walk onto to save the time of jumping, by the way. Anyway, finish the puzzle to create a ramp and use the rollerblades, which we never actually acquired, to get over the gate. Fun fact, you can have rollerblades at this point if we did the race minigame instead of skipping it. You can completely break the game by performing the same skip during the minigame. It's actually easier to perform the skip with the rollerblades on. After performing race skip during the race itself, you can complete quests much quicker than running. However, there are two catches. First of all, you do actually have to take the time to play some of the minigame. Also, when you glitch out of the minigame, the minigame's timer is still ticking in the background, even when you can't see it, and you'll respawn once the timer runs out. You can race around and complete as many actions as possible, then when you respawn, you'll keep the rollerblades and you can simply perform the skip again, but between the respawn time and the time you lose in the game itself, I'm told this isn't a worthwhile strategy. It's no fun to do as you're told though, and it lets you zoom around these walking sections a lot quicker. It might make for a fun run if you're not worried about being super competitive, or if you're really struggling with a race skip since the rollerblades make that a lot easier. Anyway, back to the main run. Actually, there's not much to get back to, as all we need to do is watch Sunny vanish in the thin air, perform another Ash skip, and skip the final cutscene. Glitching the cutscenes made it look like Sprout is dead, by the way. Another poor victim of the bunny gang. Don't worry, Sprout. We got him. Rest in peace. This has been a really fun adventure for me. Like I said, this is my first time diving into the world of speedrunning, and I can think of no better way to have done so than through the Brony community, which I'm already so heavily a part of. Speedrunning this game is fairly competitive at the higher levels, but it's also a really friendly and really helpful sub-community. This also seems like a great game to speedrun for a first-timer, as it's not incredibly long like some games are, and it's just difficult enough to be a fun challenge. Uh, just be sure to do Bunny Skip 1.0 if you value your sanity. I've really just scratched the surface here, as there's always new people playing and new things to discover and multiple categories to explore. There's even a blindfolded category, which is incredible. I don't think I can recommend buying the game just to speedrun it, but if you do happen to already own it, or you catch it during a good sale, I highly recommend giving the speedrun a try. I'll link the speedrun.com leaderboard in the description, where you can see the current world record, find more information, and see how far I have fallen from 8th place since making this video. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Be sure to check out some of my other videos while you're here. Have a good day, and remember, bunnies are the enemy.